traceability, transparency, and decentralization. These are just some of the features that make blockchain technology so attractive for businesses and individuals. One company that wants to create greater shared value using this technology is Cooler. The impact investment firm relies on blockchain to make investing in natural resources and commodities more accessible and transparent. My name is Olivia Kinghorst and I'm here in Davos to speak with the Cooler team, starting with co-founder Michael Yakeley. Micah, it's great to have you join us here in beautiful Davos. I gather it's your first time here and you're already enjoying it so far. It is. We're having a blast. So let's start from the very beginning. What exactly is the mission of Kula? What are you trying to achieve here? Yeah, Kula was born out of a couple conversations um, revolving around some major world problems. And a lot of that is, is natural resources and other commodities, how that affects investors and how that affects the locals that live around these, these natural resources. Kula is seeking to bring in the blockchain. Since its inception, we've become an impact investment vehicle. Basically, what we're offering to investors is the ability to invest transparently into some of these natural resources. But then on the back end of that, we're offering uh, profit sharing and governance to the locals that live around these natural resources. So blockchain is not new. We've already seen it in action across many industries. But how do you think we can really accelerate and increase the acceptance of this technology? Yeah, well, blockchain, like you said, is a new technology. And we've seen this all before back in the mid 90s when Internet was being um, widely adopted. People didn't really understand how powerful the Internet was going to be until many years later. And now we can't live without it. Well, we really feel that blockchain is going to be the same um, adopt, uh, adoption. So people are going to, you know, it's, it's, it's slow coming right now. People are really learning about what it, what it does, how it operates, the benefits it brings. But in a few years, we believe that if companies aren't utilizing the blockchain, they're going to be far behind the times. Michael, do you think we have only scratched the surface here when it comes to blockchain technology? Absolutely. Yeah, the, the use cases for blockchain um, haven't really been widely seen yet. I think even Kula is bringing in a new use case for blockchain that people have never seen. We're, we're really blazing a new trail here, um, specifically with our organization, but we're going to see that more and more as, as people design uh, more solutions using blockchain for world problems. So let's fast forward 10 years. Where do you think uh, blockchain will be evolving then? How do you see it being adopted across industries and creating impact? My goodness. Um, I think blockchain is going to be a, a ubiquitous word. People are going to use it all the time. They're going to understand it. There's not going to be the need for education about what blockchain is. Um, and the it gets me excited thinking about um, a, a society where with, with trustless transactions, right? The block, that was the whole reason the blockchain was, was created, was to create a world where trust isn't as required. And so Kula is implementing that specifically for investors and our community members, right? Where everybody uh, operates in a world with, where there's less required trust because the blockchain uh, provides smart contracts and, and secure transactions, et cetera, et cetera. But it's really the idea of living in a, in a trustless society. And that's not a society without trust. It's just one that, that we know the blockchain is, it, you know, is transparent and everybody operates in a transparent world and therefore there's less requirement for trust. We also spoke with Cooler co-founder Samuel Chen to find out more about their unique governance structure. Thank you, Sam, for joining us. Now, in order to achieve the mission of Kula, you've actually adopted a very innovative system based on decentralization and autonomy. Talk to us through about how that really works. The term used in the blockchain industry is, a, is called a DAO, it stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. However, given what Kula does, which is transparent impact investment using blockchain, perhaps a better term is democratized, semi-autonomous organization. Uh, where we wrap the DAO structures around our regional projects, and then we sell Kula token to invest in those projects. So you have also have a double DAO structure. How unique is that? Right. So at the regional level, because we want to enable transparency, immutability, community participation, and ownership with governance, we need the DAO structure in a more decentralized manner when we wrap them around the regional projects. At the cooler level, where the investment decisions are made, 
we're thinking why not make that a DAO as well. So therefore you have two layers and the top DAO and the, the, the original level DAO. That's why it's a double DAO. But at the top level, we are taking a more centralized approach just because these investment decisions cannot be made really in a completely decentralized manner. Uh, we need to take advantage of really the best of both worlds of decentralization and centralization and utilizing our functional teams. Finally, we sat down with Cooler co-founder Chris Turner to talk about how the company is already creating shared value and impact. Hello, Chris, and welcome. Now, we've already touched on DAO, but just walk us through what are the limitations and complexities of operating with such a governance structure? Yeah, so our governance structure has become quite unique. We're running a triangulated uh, group of different authority structures within our decentralized platform as a way to put checks and balances in, and that enables us then to leverage the upside of decentralization along with centralized processes, because at the end of the day, someone's got to be held to account for the decisions that are made. And we do that so that we can protect our investors, protect stakeholder interests, and also make sure that the compliance for regulators is, is satisfactory, because they, they want to make sure that someone can be held to account for these things. And so really, we're in that hybrid place between those two elements. And, and, and that's really important because, you know, in this type of context and, you know, over the last decade, we've talked about the power of decentralization as a tool that really has got lots of upside. But the reality is where things have been left without regulation, that decentralization has led to some massive fails with billions of dollars lost. So we've really worked hard to make sure that we're regulating ourselves, mm -hmm. making sure that our constitution is grounded in a set of of clear values. That there are these checks and balances. Yeah, and ethical parameters so the checks and balances are there. Okay, so ultimately, Kula is focusing on real world issues. That's what you're trying to address. And you do have a focus on natural resource projects. I'd love to get an idea and if you could share some examples of some of the ways that you have really tried to contribute to regional economic development. Yeah, so our, our first project was in Zambia with a company called Bekazulu Mining. Uh, and we it's a limestone asset and we capitalized them last year as our first regional DAO. And that that also, as, as a local community, the members also receive governance and value in the tokens that they hold as being part of that DAO. And that's had some really interesting impacts. So we've, we've done some humanitarian work with water and that's had some agricultural impacts. But what's really interesting, where those DAO members can use our app, they're making choices that impact their lives on the asset that they're you know, developing. And so that's, that's led to uh, them choosing to increase their pay above market rates. Also, men and women get, uh, get the same amount in their pay, paychecks each month, so they've got pay parity, which is exciting. And then also with the value that they hold, uh, that starts to capitalise really new opportunities for them with microeconomic development. And, and also that's led to national attention with us working with pilot projects at the central level. Now, all of this reflects, of course, your mission to create shared value. It seems that there's a lot on the plate. It's going to be a busy couple of years and a lot of projects in the pipeline. Thank you so much to you as well as the team for joining us today. Thank you.